If there's one thing I know, it's leadership. What works, what doesn't. As well as all the lies that people tell themselves, which holds them back as leaders. And in this video, I'm gonna share 12 wake up calls every leader needs to hear, including some actionable tips for each so that you can stop deceiving yourself and become the leader you're meant to be. And if you can't stay on this video for five minutes without clicking off, I've got some news for you. You're probably not gonna make it as a leader. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Partaker. I'm a CEO coach who's coached hundreds of the world's leading CEOs from multi-billion dollar companies to rapidly growing startups and scale-ups. And I've also been recognized as the CEO of the year. So let's get into it. Wake up call number one. If your team's failing, look into the mirror. You're the problem. Leadership begins with self-awareness. When a team underperforms, the first place a true leader looks is not out the window at external factors, but in the mirror at themselves. You see, acknowledging that you might be part of the problem is the first step toward becoming part of the solution. So what can you do? Number one, regularly solicit feedback from your team about your leadership style and decisions and reflect daily on your actions to assess their impact on your team's performance. All of this is gonna inform your own development opportunities. I once coached a tech startup CEO who noticed his team was consistently missing product development deadlines. But instead of blaming the team, I encouraged him to ask for some feedback where he discovered it was his last minute changes that were causing confusion and delays. So we got to work. I showed him how to think through and create clearer goals as well as how to communicate changes more effectively, which led to a dramatic turnaround in his team's performance. Number two, if you can't handle criticism, you're not fit to lead. Leadership requires thick skin and an open mind. Being able to take constructive criticism without taking it personally is a crucial skill for any leader. And it's not just about hearing feedback, but actively seeking it out and using it to grow. So what can you do here? Well, establish a regular structured process for receiving feedback through methods like monthly one-on-ones or anonymous surveys, and then practice active listening to fully understand feedback without immediately preparing your defense. You see, after receiving criticism, you wanna make sure that you clearly outline the steps you plan to take to address the issues raised so that you ensure your own continuous improvement. And the research shows that leaders who seek out and act on feedback tend to have higher performing teams. In fact, a study from Gallup found that managers who receive feedback on their strengths are 8.9% more profitable. And teams led by managers open to feedback show 12.5% greater productivity. Wake up call number three, your title makes you a manager, your people make you a leader. Don't confuse the two. Holding a title doesn't automatically grant you the respect and loyalty of your team. True leadership is earned by how well you support and inspire your people, not by the position that you hold. So what can you do here? So one simple way to support and inspire your team is to empower them. And you can do so by delegating meaningful tasks that stretch their capabilities and show trust in their judgment. This not only enhances their skills, but also deepens their commitment to the team's goals. Think of leadership as a bridge rather than a pedestal. A bridge connects people, facilitating exchange and support while a pedestal isolates you above others. By being a bridge, you enable stronger connections and a free flow of ideas, which are crucial for strong leadership. All right, wake up call number four. Don't preach teamwork and then play favorites. Hypocrisy kills culture. Nothing erodes trust faster than a leader who says one thing and does another. If you advocate for teamwork, but then play favorites, you're not just being hypocritical, you're actively damaging the very culture you're trying to build. So how do you protect against this? So one way is to intentionally commit to equitable treatment by implementing transparent processes for assignments and rewards. This single step can significantly diminish any perceptions of favoritism and reinforce a culture of fairness and respect. Think about it this way. Favoring someone in a team is like picking a favorite child in front of their siblings. It's not just awkward, it's also a recipe for a family feud. Number five, stop micromanaging. If you don't trust your team, why should they trust you? Research by Chambers in 2009 revealed alarming trends in micromanagement. 79% of surveyed employees experienced micromanagement with 85% reporting that these behaviors had a negative impact on morale and productivity. And shockingly, 91% of micromanagers were unaware that their management style had driven employees to resign. You see, micromanagement signals a lack of trust, which can suffocate initiative and stifle a team's ability to innovate. So when leaders hover around and control every detail, it not only slows down processes, but also demoralizes a team. So what can you do here? Well, set clear objectives and trust your team to meet them. Focus on the outcomes rather than the process. Allowing employees the space to use their skills and creativity to reach goals. And this approach also will free up your time as a leader so that you can focus on bigger picture strategic thinking. I know I have a lot of early stage entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs in my audience. And if you're one of them, 
you need to start consciously crafting your leadership style. And I've built a free crash course to help you do exactly that. In my ultimate leadership guide, you'll learn the five big mistakes every new leader makes and how to avoid them and how to make high stakes decisions with confidence and win back 10 hours a week. You can gain access for free in the description below. Wake up call number six. If you're not developing your team, you're diminishing them. So step up or step aside. John C. Maxwell once said, leaders must be close enough to relate to others, but far enough ahead to motivate them. And this quote underscores the crucial role leaders play in the development of their teams. See, leadership transcends managing day-to-day -day operations. It's fundamentally about cultivating the growth and potential of your team members. So neglecting their development not only curtails their professional growth, but also limits the overall progress of your organization. So how do we address this one? Well, one powerful way is to invest in structured training programs and personalized coaching sessions for your team. You want to choose initiatives that not only enhance their current skills, but also prepare them for future challenges, which will keep your team adaptable and forward thinking. Number seven, if your team's afraid to speak up, you've already failed as a leader. A culture of open communication is key to effective leadership. And when team members are reluctant to share their ideas or concerns, it indicates a significant breakdown in trust and openness, two essential ingredients for a healthy work environment. So how do we make sure this doesn't happen? Well, I suggest suggest you implement a clear, transparent policy that supports and protects employees when they raise concerns or suggestions. And you can regularly reinforce this policy in meetings and through company communications to ensure everyone knows that they're encouraged to speak up and that it's safe to do so. A survey by Gallup highlighted that companies with a higher rate of employee engagement report up to 30% greater profitability. See, engagement is strongly linked to open communication channels, demonstrated that when employees feel heard, they are more committed and productive. Number eight, if you're not not accountable, you're not credible, so own your mistakes. Accountability is essential for building trust and credibility in leadership. And when leaders own their mistakes, they demonstrate a commitment to transparency and integrity, setting a powerful example for their team. So what to do here? Well, lead by example to foster a culture of accountability. That means publicly acknowledging your own mistakes and sharing the lessons that are learned. And that practice not only makes you more relatable as a leader, but it also encourages others to own their actions. President Harry S. Truman famously had a sign on his desk that read, the buck stops stops here, which reflected his belief in taking personal responsibility for the actions of his administration. And this phrase has become synonymous with the ultimate accountability expected of great leaders. Number nine, don't just set the pace, set the standard. Excellence is contagious. Leading the charge is essential, but setting the standard goes deeper. It involves crafting high expectations for quality ethics and performance that permeate every aspect of the organization. So here you have to continually reassess and elevate your team's performance standards and make sure you engage your team in this process to ensure the standards are ambitious yet achievable, encouraging everyone to own and strive towards these higher expectations. Steve Jobs, co-founder of Apple, famously emphasized the importance of excellence in every aspect of his company's operation, from product design to software functionality. And his relentless pursuit of excellence set a high bar not only for Apple, but for the entire tech industry driving his teams to innovate continually. Number 10, your team doesn't work for you, you work for them, so serve to lead. True leadership flips the traditional hierarchy. Instead of your team serving your directives, you're there to support them in achieving their goals and overcoming obstacles. And this service-oriented mindset fosters a more empowered and proactive team. So what can you do here? Well, actively seek to remove barriers that hinder your team's performance. This can involve streamlining processes, providing necessary resources, or just offering support during challenging projects. Your role is to facilitate their success, not just oversee their work. Herb Kelleher, the co-founder of Southwest Airlines, famously prioritized his employees above all else often saying, we're in the customer service business. We just happen to fly airplanes. Kelleher's philosophy was that by taking care of his employees, they would take care of the customers, which in turn would please the shareholders. His approach not only revolutionized airline customer service, but also created one of the most loyal workforces in the industry. Number 11, if your actions don't inspire, your words won't. So lead by example. Leadership is significantly more about what you do rather than what you say. Remember, your actions are a powerful medium to communicate your values and expectations to your team, and consistency between your words and actions not only builds credibility, but also serves as a powerful source of inspiration. So for this one, make a habit of visibly demonstrating the values and work ethic you expect from your team. 
This could be showing dedication, integrity, innovation, or compassion in your daily interactions and decisions. In her book, Lean In, Women, Work, and the Will to Lead, Sheryl Sandberg writes, leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure that impact lasts in your absence. And this quote encapsulates the essence of inspirational leadership, not just leading teams, but elevating them to continue thriving even beyond your direct influence. If you're enjoying this video, you'll love my best-selling book, The Three Alarms, and I'm currently offering it for free to my YouTube audience. Among other things, you'll learn how to build your anti-fragility and turn stress into strength, how to avoid the five most common traps to reaching your full potential, and how to overcome procrastination and become super productive. So get your free copy in the description below. And number 12, a leader takes the blame and shares the fame, no exceptions. In the book Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink, he emphasizes the critical importance of leaders taking full responsibility responsibility for their team's failures as well as successes. He states, the best leaders don't just take responsibility for their job, they take extreme ownership of everything that impacts their mission. And this principle is foundational, showing that true leaders stand accountable for every outcome, shielding their team while ensuring that accolades are shared. You see, leadership is fundamentally about bearing the burden of failures and generously distributing the recognition for successes. And that dual approach not only cultivates a culture of trust and respect, but also drives teams to be more cohesive and motivated. So be the first one to own up to mistakes and the last to take credit. Consistently apply this principle in daily interactions and team meetings to reinforce a culture of mutual respect and collective effort. So hopefully you'll lead more intentionally after watching this video and close the gap between the leader you are and the leader you're capable of being. And be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And also check out my free newsletter and leadership training. You'll find the links in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.